Welcome to Stager Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. My name is Stephanie. This is the podcast where we bring you the latest tips, tricks, and expert insights from the world of professional staging. And I'm joined by my friend and fellow staging expert, Candace. Hi, everyone. We may be competitors in the Denver market, but we believe in abundance and collaboration over competition. And we're here to share our collective knowledge with you. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the experts. This is Stager Savvy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stager Savvy. We have a very special um, episode for you and a very special guest. Of course, we always have our our other host, Stephanie. Hi, Hello, Stephanie. Everybody. And our special guest today is Donna Wood with Hearthstone Realty. Donna is uh, has been a realtor for very many years and has a lot of experience in the real estate market and what it takes to get the home sold. Welcome, Donna. Well, thanks for having me here today. Yeah, we are excited to have you. Donna and I have worked together quite a few times to get some of the homes that she's put to market stage ready and market ready. And so she knows what it takes to get uh, these homes sold. So how are you, Donna? Good, good. I, I'm so, so glad you were able to come and join us today on this podcast. Uh, we're going to ask you just, you know, different questions about the market and staging and all of that and just have some fun. Good. Sounds right, good. Stephanie? Absolutely. I'm excited. I want, Donna, can we start? Can you tell us a little bit about you and your business and how long you've sure, been doing this sure. and all, um, of, all of that stuff? Sure. My background's in business. And um, before I was married, I worked for Chase Bank and I worked in lending and foreclosures. So that was kind of my background. And then I actually worked for a little bit even in the plumbing industry, which happens to be a great help for me going into real estate. And sure. so I've been doing it for, I don't know, over 20 years. Wow. And if I go back to Chase, even longer. Right. But um, I, I really started getting into a lot of real estate when it was back in the foreclosures. And so I'm very familiar with that. And I've worked with banks. I've done short sales. I've done the whole gamut. But, um, but my specialty is residential. Real, sell, buying and selling. So, and she's and I, very good at it. Oh, awesome. well, thank you. But she I is. do enjoy helping my clients get the best they can for their houses. And Absolutely. usually it includes staging. It's just kind of simple. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how did, have you always done staging? Has it always been like a part of your process? Nope. <laughs> so how did that happen? I met Candace in line at Target. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> you, have to, you have to share that story. He was I just, Candace and I are friendly. And I said, <laughs> I said, oh, those are pretty rugs you're buying. And she looked at me and she said, now, which one do you think is better? And I said, I think they both are good. And then she yeah. told me she was a stager. So I kind of, what I used to do, I, I used to kind of go in and kind of help with staging myself. And I had, I didn't have near the warehouse and resources as Candace, but I had a mini little staging stuff. Yeah. And um, I was getting pretty busy and then I was getting, I was starting to feel like I was a little out of my league. So then I talked to Candace and we just chatted it up and yeah. I think I looked at some stuff and I think pretty soon after there, I was like, I think I need your help. And yes. so she's done amazing work. Amazing. And that was your brother-in-law, wasn't it? Was that the first one? I can't remember. I don't know. I, know. I think there's it was. been a lot. There's yes. been a lot. That's well, so there has awesome. now. Yes. So Donna's yeah. a believer. And Donna, how has it helped your the homes that you've been selling? Well, you know, I think one big hurdle sometimes is the seller. And um, I believe in it so strongly sometimes at my listing presentation, not every listing, but I will tell them I'll pay for staging and you can pay me back at closing. Nice. And sometimes sellers are really surprised by that, but that has been major winner. And, and they've been so shocked at how much more they got. So, um, but I, sometimes, you know, you can go into a beautiful home and people think their home is beautiful and pristine, but I've even feel like 
Candace comes in and goes, yep, the home is beautiful. It's well-maintained, but some of these pictures need to go down, a few new light fixtures. So even someone that has a really beautiful, well-maintained home, it still makes a difference because For as sure. we know, it's all how it looks online. Right, right. Exactly. And Donna is really good at working with her clients to get them to agree to things that most agents won't even ask. Oh my God. For instance, she'll, she'll encourage them to paint their stair railings and paint their cabinets and change their light fixtures, which not so every good. agent will even ask. Right. But that stuff makes such a big difference. Yeah. And I always tell them the cheapest way to make, to increase the value of your house is paint. Yes. Yes. And you say that too. <laughs> people really don't realize. I think, um, you know, of course, the most important thing is location. You know, I would mm. say next, and you guys would agree with this when you're coming as a stager, is that it's really clean and that it's been yeah. well maintained. And so people yes. sometimes remember everybody's house is their palace and it's the best. And so right. it is delicate when you have to tell them, you know, their 1980s chandelier has to go. But, you yeah. know, I think sometimes even too, I have even taken my clients to look at other listings, you know, and, That's and so I so big because then they see how their house is mm -hmm. looking. They can, they well, kind of can start to see it through buyer's eyes. Right. 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 Yeah. But what's hard is I think is when you have someone that has a really cluttered house and they're attached to all their clutter. I mean, sometimes you just have to tell them if it all goes in the garage and the garage is going to look horrible. Maybe this right. is the time in your life you get a storage facility, but <laughs> I just think there's a lot of approaches, but I think the key thing is it's their bottom line. And so, and Candace, you always say that, but it's like, are you going to spend the money now? Or are you going to let it sit on the market? And I think the way the market is right now, I feel like it's like a stalemate. And um, I think it used to be, a it was a buying frenzy and sellers kind of, we're at, we're we're right. at, had the 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 advantage so maybe a house always sells better on a higher price and goes under contract better when it's a stager's involved or even if you have an interior decorator like Candace that says this is the paint color and we'll just remove some of your furniture and maybe a few light fixtures but mm -hmm. um, you know i think now the way the market is if anything it's even more important Mm -hmm. I just, I do, because I just think it's kind of like sellers still want a high price. Buyers think they can, they have the upper hand. Everybody thinks they have the upper hand. Yeah. And right. right now, really, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's, it's kind of a hard right. time right now. But yeah. I think if you have a home to make it look its best, and like I always say, the price is important. But when someone comes in at a price point, you want them to walk in and be overwhelmed. I think, Candace, you said that. And you don't want to come into a house at a certain price point and be underwhelmed. Right. And I right. think those are your words, Candace. And I think when you have staging, full staging, all the major rooms, or someone that has a well-decorated house, you have some tweaks I think you tend to get people that are more overwhelmed at the beauty for the price. Right. Yeah. And Dar That's the goal anyway. Yeah. Right. Can you think of a, a property that we worked on together that, um, that just comes to mind where the staging had a really big impact on the price that they ended up receiving? Well, that house in golden. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it was a lady that had owned it since it was built. It had oh, the original gosh. building papers inside the garage, the yes. original wow. permit. And it was a great house, but it was an old lady house. Mm -hmm. she, had, she had mint green carpet under in her kitchen, even under her refrigerator. Yes. Oh, my God. And weren't her countertops green, too? Yes. And her countertops were mint green corian. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. So um, we had almost, I wouldn't say a full rehab, but a partial. 
Mm -hmm. And um, it had hardwood floors, which I really wanted to preserve as much as I could. Right. But yeah. we couldn't because they were so old. Oh, and right. It was like, how do we do this for the least and the quickest? Right. So, and but, it had um, full wallpaper and an uh, uh, old bathrooms mm -hmm. and like dark green carpet in the basement in one of the basement rooms yeah oh so my gosh. all new carpet was the easiest and down and dirty quickest but yeah and the paint so the carpet the paint the new fixtures you know it even had to have new bathtubs and sinks so i mean the, the bathrooms mm -hmm. were a total gut but they to were. save money on the kitchen, this is like a staging thing. It was too expensive. We took out some soffits mm -hmm. and that had that fixed so it was a cleaner look. But the cabinets were just painted white. And then we went, we kept the mint green Corian because it was yeah. in really good shape. Mm -hmm. And then Candace had like dark green accents. Oh, nice. And we had fabulous furniture and lamps. Yeah, and um, it really did look great. Make it, it work, work, right? It work with it, what's there. I love it. And at the you closing know? table, it was this young couple. We got top price, but the young couple went at the staging table. The buyer said, "Oh, I sure like that furniture in that house." Nice. He was so disappointed at the the walkthrough. The house was empty. Oh my god! <laughs> but it just shows you yeah. that house would have never had that price. It would have never sold like it did if it would have been vacant because right. a lot of people now are getting really lazy. They just want to, they think selling a vacant house is the way to go. Right. And yeah. it's just not. Yeah. What's your thoughts on when you take a client to go into a vacant house? What as, as an agent, what are your thoughts? Well, one thing you can see every, little scratch and tear yes. and weakness because every house has little blunders yes and you can see you you get focused on things you shouldn't focus on basically. that's right those those blunders stand out mm -hmm. 10 times more well then you see oh the windows are old oh look at and nothing looks worse than carpet that where all the furniture has been moved out right yeah with all the div divots and yes yeah but at most people are kind of, um, I think the big thing though, is people just don't realize what their return will be. Right. Well, I was going to ask you that. So why, what do you think holds agents back from using a stager and doing staging versus leaving a home vacant? They probably haven't tried it or they're not confident enough and they haven't had past success. Um, and you know, Sellers right now, I'll be honest, sellers are in shock mode because, you know, houses, you know, especially at the million dollar mark, they're like 900 and houses that were maybe 850, they're low 800s, you know, um, and that's where, you know, like location trumps everything. We all mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. But, um, I think sellers are like, hey, wait a minute. My my neighbor's house sold for 50000 more than that. So you've got to overcome that, that prices are down a little, but the interest rates are so high. Right. You know, buyers have to realize and sellers have to realize you've gonna, you're going to have to kind of meet in the middle. Right. But, right. you know. Have well, you kept like any me. stats as far as, or just kind of maybe you know, like what you think a house may have sold for? without the staging and then maybe uh, a percentage more that you got when you did stage? I think Candace, you're better on percents, <laughs> but I honestly think it's almost a crime to try and put a number on it because yeah. we know it's more. It's perceived, uh, right? <laughs> we had a house that my sellers did not think they get more than 550. Candace came in and we got 650 cash and, um, you know, that was new carpet, new paint, right. new light fixtures. It was kind right. of like that. But um, whatever a house, when you can make it look great online and you start your showings on Friday and agents go on there and it's booked out, you create this like higher interest level. Yeah. 
-hmm. And so if you like the house, but you have to wait for the person before you to leave and you know, there's a lot of showings, you know, if you have a shorter days on market, you've already made more money. Correct. Right. <clears throat> Do you have, what's your process as far as your listing presentation to your clients? Where does staging come up and how, do, how does that come up with your clients? How do you let them know that that's part of what you do? Um, you know, usually I know right away, like when I go meet with them, I'll mm -hmm. tell them, you know, I have a stager that does a great job. One thing I do is I send them past listings awesome. of, of the houses that are staged that Candace has done. Love and it. so that really helps. And um, another thing, it's a psychological thing. I tell my sellers, you got to look at this as it's not your house anymore. Yes. Yeah. So much of what we do is psychological. That was just two episodes ago. We talked about the psychology of staging. So yep, yep. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like I had, we had one house that um, it was the clients thought, oh, I don't know if we'll get 800. And we got like a million 20. Oh, and, wow. Mm-hmm. They did it, a lot of work to that house. And though. they, but this that's house awesome. had a lot of deferred maintenance mm. and Candace went in without me. That's the trick. I just say, oh, Candace is coming over to talk. She'll to take you. care of you. And, but they were kind of grumbling and he was really grumbling because he was trying to do a lot of it. And I kept saying, no, you need a, you need new tile in your, in your basement kitchen. And it's just got to be done. And he was grumping about it. And finally, I went over another time and he said to me, okay, Donna, I'm just viewing my house as a high, my Highlands ranch flip. <laughs> and he changed his attitude and boy, they're in Greece now. They're wow. in Japan. They're, wow. They went, they had a house in Florida and now they're traveling the world because they made so much extra money. I That's love amazing. It. That was a really a, a good house. I love it when Donna can talk to them and they can hear what she's saying. And then I come in and back her up and yeah. they're committed to doing the things they need to do to get top dollar. Right. It's that collaboration. I love it. Like that, like you said, to back her up when she's already said something, right. the stager can come in and reiterate that, that yes, it's so important. And sometimes for the seller, mm -hmm. they just need to hear it from somebody else. Right. It's not their agent. And right. you know, that's enough. Okay. I'll do it. You know, just, just yeah. having that kind of tag teaming right. really helps. Well, and that's I, really the deal. We are partners in this, in this process. For absolutely. These people. So it's a team. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And when I tell them, you know, this is my commission, this is what I provide. Part of that is I have, I pay for an interior designer and stager to come in and help me to right. help you. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a part of my listing presentation, but my listing presentation is pretty basic. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause you've been but you have a stage long enough. in there. So they know right off the bat that they're going to get all of this extra value from you. Right. Which is why she doesn't cut her commission. Absolutely. Why should you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. No. Yeah. Love and it's, it. yeah. And I, I think, I think a lot of realtors, if they um, would just try it a few more times and be a little bolder, I think if they had some success at it, because I think, it is hard to go over that little threshold of just believing it. Right. But, they don't um, want to lose the listing over some little thing, mm -hmm. but it's really not such a little thing. No, no. They and just you know, have the confidence to present it to their right. clients. I, I feel like money, money is the object for these agents that, and I don't know why they think they have to pay for it. And so I, I, right. I don't know if it's, you know, that they've already cut their commission so that then they don't want to add anything else to their package or mm -hmm. so it, uh, I do find that we have a lot of inexpensive stagers these days mm -hmm. and that there is a difference between, you know, cheap staging is not always good and good staging isn't cheap. That's right. And, and you uh, probably agree with that, huh, Donna? I would guess. Well, me staging versus you, uh, <laughs> day. I got rid of all of my shower curtains. My shower <laughs> It was really great. It made more space in my basement and my closets. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, I had a thought and now I forgot it. Uh, 
Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Oh. Um, well, well, how do you oh. think, um, how do you think staging listings helps the, the agents? You mean that, like me as an agent selling, how does it help me? Yeah. Like how does it help you besides the fact that you can sell your house, the, the house generally quicker. Is there any other way that it can help you? Um, well, you know, one thing I do, I think we all want to work with professionals. And I think when, when you're in a real estate deal, you always want to think I'm dealing with a professional that's highly qualified. Mm -hmm. And I think when an agent, a buyer's agent comes into my listing, they're going to say, oh, this agent, they know what they're doing and they're professional. So the way this looks, I'm probably going to be dealing with a competent agent that knows what right. she's doing. So right. if you come into a house, it's just a disaster. <laughs> you're like, you're, you, oh, I mean, in, in the, the agent may be highly qualified, but does it make an agent look highly qualified? Right. Makes them look cheap, I think. Right. Or like and, they don't know what they're doing. It's kind of like that too. Pictures, it's like pictures of bathrooms when the toilet lids are up. <laughs> right. Don't, don't do it. No. Well, it, you know, it's kind of like, what do you think of an agent that takes their own pictures? Oh, right. yeah. No they're not, yeah. Right. Not presenting so it. even though that agent may be holo highly qualified and sometimes you have to realize sometimes it's the seller that's demanding it. For sure. And there, there are exceptions, but yeah. it, it um, but what do you really think of an, of an agent when you go into a disaster? Right. You're like, oh, this one might be a little difficult. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it reflects on your brand and what you're, tr what you're trying know, to put out there. Yeah. There was, a, there was a house over by, it was like your worst disaster ever, but mm -hmm. why the agent didn't say you got to get rid of this in the middle of the basement. They had built up, they had, they had a concrete in the middle of the basement. They had a toilet. Oh, <laughs> you know, it wasn't selling because imagine like, that. Hello. Right. Like, how does that agent look when they have a toilet in the middle of the basement, all open? It was unfinished basement. I mean, that's like a worst case scenario. Bro, yeah. What in the world? But I mean, that doesn't make the listing agent look very good. You know, right. all they needed to do was remove the toilet and cap it. Right. But that's a that's a worst case scenario. Of <laughs> how, you, how do you look bad at what you do? Right. I, I was not involved in that house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at that with buyers and I said, mm -mm, this is going to cost a lot of money to fix. Right. Yep, they I feel like, too, it, it could help you when you. When you're having most of your listings staged and other agents start to know, oh, that's one of Donna's listings. Mm. It's going to look good. I'm going to take my clients there. So you're getting more traffic there. Right. They're more likely to want to work with you also because like you're saying, they know you're a competent agent and they know all of those things about you. So all of those right. things help and you and help your business and help your yeah. brand really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. True. Yeah. That's great. I mean, so why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Donna, are there certain times that you think staging is more important than other times to stage? Um, well, hmm. I mean, I guess I think you always want to present a house to look well. You know, I, yes, I don't, you know, if someone is just, um, wants, wants the lowest price and doesn't really care, just wants to unload it quick, then don't stage it. But you right. want the top price. Right. Everybody right. wants the most money. Nobody wants to leave money on the table, right? Nobody I know anyway. Right? So, <laughs> no. And you know, I think sometimes too, it's not bad to have a partial stage if someone's kind of overwhelmed. Okay. And that's a good segue maybe for some realtors to like not be overwhelmed by it. But just, hey, let's just try the living room and kitchen for you. Okay. But I always think the master bedroom, the living mm -hmm. room and kitchen, and the bathrooms. And the bathrooms don't cost a lot to stage. No. But right. what the bathroom looks like, 
Right. It's that emotional pull in those bathrooms, I think, when they get That's staging. That's right. Right. And I, I usually throw bathrooms in for free. So why not do the bathrooms? <laughs> <laughs> right. That, yeah. That emotional, that emotional pull, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all yeah. got to go. <laughs> I think too, you know, not to like make it like serious pressure, but you know, people that are worried about the money and they don't want to, you know, be out of the house. I mean, it always is better when the people are not in the house. I mean, living in the house, that's right. the most ideal, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's a great way to appeal to people that, you know what, you're going to, as soon as this goes under contract, you got your house back. This right. is going to be short. On some of those deals with Candace, when the market was hotter, I had my clients stay in hotels over the weekend. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you know what? Man. Yeah. That... Go have a little vacation. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of this. Right. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Why not? But you kind of have to know your clients well and sure. know how to, to manage it. Because it's managing sellers is not always easy. And now the well, market, yeah. the market used to be, you were so glad to go under contract. You didn't give that house up and you you're seeing houses go back on the market. A lot of that. And, and tell us why, why you think that's going on. I think they may be priced at a little high. I think it's this little battering back and forth. And I think buyers are nervous about the interest rate. They're having to pay a lot more per month and right. like, well, the furnace is old. Either you put in a new one or we're not buying it. That's a simple, yeah. a simple one. So that's right. what's going on. I think that's true for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, know. you get any pushback from your clients that like, they don't want to have a stager. They don't want somebody strange coming in their house. They just want to work with you. You know, any, anything like that, or because you present it right from the get go, that's not really an issue for you. Yeah. Agree. They might grumble, okay. but I'll say, well, do you want top price? Do you want it yeah. under the market under contract right away? Do you want your house back? This is how we do it. Good. And then I go, well, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is why I like working with Donna is she tells it like it is. You right. Know, she's not pussyfooting around these issues. Right. She's telling it like it is and, and people right. believe in her and what she's Cli doing. I think clients like that too. Like, and mm -hmm. even from us, you know, right. they, we right. want, they want the realtors for sure to tell it how it is. But then when the stager comes in, we really have to tell it like it is. And they, right. they want to know the truth because they don't buy and sell houses all the time. They don't know what they're supposed to do. Right. Right. And, you know, I, I don't get every listing that I present. Sure. I we most. don't get any, all get our most. stages either. No. Right. But, you know, I feel like I tell sellers, I will give you the honest truth. This is the best way to do it. And it's up to you. But, you know, and you know what? Usually if someone doesn't really believe in you and you don't have a good working relationship, it's not going to go well anyway. That's so, right. They're not your people. You don't want that anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. So you I, I totally work. believe in that. Like you're you attracting the people that you're supposed to work with. And if they don't, right. if they don't choose you, it would have been miserable and right. <laughs> you right. don't need that. Right. It's like staging. You don't want to go in somewhere where someone doesn't want you in there. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm hmm do you have any other questions for Stephanie? I'm looking through my list of questions over here. Okay. Um, I think we've kind of hit really everything important. Um, <laughs> you know, see. one thing I'll tell you is that I think is a good thing is when a seller has their house partially staged or fully staged or whatever it is, I have never had a client say, oh, I don't like the way this looks. They love it and they're proud of it. And you know what? They actually have a higher incentive of keeping it looking nice. Yes. Agree. I love and, that. And so often they say, boy, I wish I wasn't moving. I wish it, it I right? this was done long ago, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. Can you come to my new house? I love this so much. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And you know, some people don't even realize to sand hardwood floors, 
is not that expensive. Right. And like the, the house that was the million 20 after the floors were all sanded, they were like, Oh, we should have done this years ago. Yeah. And they kind of like, Oh, our house looks so good. Yeah. Oh, their house did look so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. You'll have to share some before and afters with me, Candace, and some photos sh- that you two have done together. I should have. Especially uh, the green. Prepared the, that. The green yeah. countertop. But I yeah. mean, we can do it for Instagram. Oh, oh she the, has it on Instagram sometimes. She yes. Oh, the before and after of the golden house with the green carpet. Yes. Yes. I want to see that. We'll we'll share that on our social Okay. As, as we get ready to release this. That'd be good. Yeah. So awesome. Donna, last thoughts or recommendations to other agents or anything you can think of to share your wisdom? You know, I think from as a realtor and even as you as a stager, when you go in and you're honest and you tell them what you know, and this is what works best. It, when people just say, no, I'm not interested move on. Yeah. Great advice. You know? Yeah. Love because it. you're, we're not going to talk everybody into it and Probably it's not, not for everybody, you know, right. and sometimes, and you're good with this Candace, you know, someone may have their prize picture in a certain spot and they're like, that's just the one thing we just can't move. Well then don't move it, but just right. work around it. And you're good with that. So, yeah, there's you know, so many things like, you can just work around. Right. 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 So, but you know what? It is kind of true in life. You kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. So true. That is so true. So any advice to agents who don't use a stager? (laughs) Try it. (laughs) Try it and you'll, you'll, you'll be, you'll be, you know, let the results tell you what to do. I love that. You know, you feel like it helps your business grow by using staging? Sure. Because my business is mainly referrals. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. all referrals. Right. So when my clients say, Oh, Donna will do her very best and work hard, whether it's buying or selling, they have confidence in me. And so they're going to tell other people. So, yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of the stress away from you, I would imagine, because now you don't have to worry about that part. Candace is going to take care of that part. Right. You can focus on all the hundreds right. of other right. things you have to do. <laughs> right. And there's times where I think something should be one way and Candace is a different way. And I'm like, do it her way. Right. You know, just do it. Yeah, she awesome. says that's super important and then just do it. And you kind of have to let go. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I think that might be the hardest part for some agents. Because they want to say yeah. everything. Sure. Yeah. They want to be in control of the whole thing and to, to yeah. give a piece of the pie away. Right. For, for somebody else to tackle. That's hard. Sure. It is. It's hard for me in my own home. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. Donna, it's so nice that you were able to join us today. Yeah. And we appreciate everything that you've said, especially well, all the nice things you said about me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But Donna's a gem. Love her. Donna, do you have a particular area of town that you're in? We're Everybody, we're here in the Denver market. Well, um, I live in Highlands Ranch. So, oh, okay. I, you know, the Highlands Ranch, Littleton. But I've, I'm all the whole Denver metro area. And do you have a website where our people can go check you out if no, they want to? No website. No. Okay. Any socials or anything like that? <laughs> Just find Donna Wood. Donna Wood, Hearthstone Realty. Yep. I work hard and that's, and I love my clients and they give me great referrals and that's kind of how my business d- goes. And you love know it. what? It's slow now, but you know what? It'll come back. It'll you know, come back. it always ebbs and flows, but yep. all I can say is you can't go wrong with staging and Candace does an awesome job. She does thank an you, awesome Anna. job for sure. Thank all right. You. Well, thank you so much for being here. It was great chatting. Yep, with you. It was a pleasure. And thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Bye Have everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Stager Savvy, insider secrets to stage your home and sell it for more. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion on home staging and gained valuable insights that you can apply to your own real estate journey. If you have any questions, ideas for future episodes, or would like to learn more about our services, please feel free to visit our website, stagersavvy.com, or reach out to us directly at stagersavvy at gmail.com. We're always here to help. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date on the latest episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us and helps us improve our content and reach more people. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.